Hi, it's Dwyer. It is Monday, June the 7th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let me congratulate Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather. I know many people online, on social media, were saying, Oh, I didn't buy the fight. I'm glad I didn't. Who would buy the fight? I think many people bought the fight. I believe these great fighter versus inexperienced YouTuber fights are very good and are very important for boxing. Let me just point out too, I was wrong on this fight. I was expecting the great fighter, Floyd Mayweather, to win this fight by stoppage. He ran into a very inspired performance. I mean very inspired performance by a guy who had a record of 0-1 going into the fight. A guy who came with a certain attitude of, hey, this is a dream of mine. I'm going to do my damnedest to try to live it. So let's talk about the format just for a minute, then let's talk about the fight. Because I thought what Logan Paul did is significant. It's a blueprint that other amateurs with dreams of beating professionals and fans of the amateur who've dreamt themselves of beating professionals can follow. Now let me just say, many of us fantasize about how we, and I use we broadly, not just us, but the people around us, would do against professional athletes. We want to believe we can compete, that the great athlete in our neighborhood, at our high school or our college, on his best day, might be able to compete give an inspired performance against a world-class athlete. Right, folks, this is how it's been for years. Movies like Rocky resonate. The idea of the local thug holding his own against the world heavyweight champion. The idea of the club fighter from our club on his best day holding his own against a star athlete. Now in boxing, you have a unique opportunity because boxing is denominated in weights. I don't think any of us want to see a heavy-handed heavyweight. Let's say an Anthony Joshua. Beat up and badly injure our local athlete in an exhibition. The way he beat up and injured Dylan White or Alexander Povetkin, right? I believe the fantasy only goes so far. We don't want to see the 160-pound guy get beaten up by 50-odd-year-old Mike Tyson. We understand that's too dangerous. We don't want to see amateurs given major concussions. So you have a setup here where you have the reverse. You have the smaller great fighter, in this case, Floyd Mayweather, right? A guy who weighed in at less than 160 pounds. And you have the illusion of competitiveness because you have an inexperienced YouTuber who is literally more than 30 pounds more than the great fighter. And so there's a size gap. They can sell the fight. As dangerous as it is to face Floyd Mayweather, you get the feeling that there's less danger involved if the opponent outweighs him by 30-odd pounds. So folks, the concept is riveting. I know social media is saying a lot of things differently, right? This was a ripoff and all this other stuff. No, no, the concept is riveting. The idea is, hey, can my size advantage 
and my youth, my age advantage. If I'm serious about this, offset the obvious talent gap between us, and by us again, it's us, the people in our neighborhood, the people outside the game, and folks in the game, stars in the game. So this fight to me was riveting. I'm expecting great numbers. I'm expecting the kind of numbers where Floyd, perhaps others, are going to say, hey, you know what? Maybe I want to give this a go. Right? Great fighter, Hall of Famer, Oscar De La Hoya, was on Triller during a telecast. Not this telecast, but some other telecast. This telecast was, of course, on Showtime pay-per-view. And he was talking about how he was inspired watching Mike Tyson make his comeback against Roy Jones. Right from the athlete's perspective, it's an opportunity to get back in front of the limelight. I believe you have a number of athletes out there who want to get back in the limelight. And keep in mind, it's not vanity. Because these shows also show us how talented these athletes are. So you're watching Floyd. And he's spanking a guy who weighs more than 30-odd pounds more than him, who's literally decades younger than him. And then you say to yourself, wow, you know what? This guy has skills. Then you look at the rest of the sport of boxing and you realize these fighters are talented. Professional prize fighting is different than street fighting. I believe formats like this highlight the talent and skill it takes to be elite in the sport. So let's talk about this fight. Now I saw most of it, not all of it. When you're a parent, sometimes it's hard to see all of events, right? There's certain things outside of your control. But the first round, folks, it's a jaw dropper. There's a moment in the first round where Logan Paul opens up and you understand this guy is here for more than the payday. This is his moment. He has a fantasy about being able to impose his size and youth on Mayweather. And he's going for it. So he throws a lot of punches. And this is a young guy who looks like he's in shape. He gets tired later in the fight. He's not tired in the first round. So he goes for it. He throws a bunch of punches on Floyd. He catches Floyd a little bit off guard. So then you see Mayweather. And Mayweather starts getting defensive while being in front of Logan Paul. Mayweather then starts backing up, backs across the ring. Logan Paul is in front of him, throwing shots. Would it surprise you to learn that a fighter with no professional wins won the first round of the fight? over Floyd Mayweather, at least on my scorecard. More importantly, you went into this fight thinking exhibition. Can I trust these guys with my money? By the end of the first round, you knew you could. Win, lose, or draw. Logan Paul was going for it. So then we get to the middle rounds. And you have the spectacle of a middle-aged guy, right? This fight delivered on mutual many levels, right? You have the spectacle of a middle-aged guy who's outweighed by dozens of pounds hunting down the bigger guy. 
Then the fight had a wrinkle. And it was a spectacular wrinkle. I've been here online talking about how some fighters, Big George Foreman comes to mind, really knew how to use size. Right? Really knew how to use size. Really knew how to lean on a fighter. Really knew how to clinch. How to make a smaller fighter feel smaller. Have to carry the weight of the bigger man. Well, folks, one of the shockers of this fight was that in the middle rounds of this fight, that's what Logan Paul started to do. It was masterful. He wins the first round on Valia. Mayweather comes in. Mayweather is sharp. Mayweather's landing some sharp left hooks. You notice that Mayweather has figured out Logan Paul and isn't too worried about Logan Paul's counters. You understand this is the part of the fight where the great fighters' talent, experience, technique takes over. So Logan Paul is in a bit of survival mode. And folks, he does it well. There's some professional fighters, in my opinion, who can't handle the pacing of a fight, who let the fight get away from them. Here you had Logan Paul clinching, leaning on Floyd, doing what he had to to survive. Then you got to another interesting part of the fight. The part where Mayweather... The middle-aged guy still has the stamina, is still coming forward, is trying to be active, right? Mayweather's earning the paycheck. And then you notice that Logan Paul, who gave it all he had in the first round, by the fourth round, folks, he's tired. Then as you're watching the thing, you're thinking to yourself, and by the way, the second through fifth rounds are in my favorites folder here on YouTube. You're, you're watching the fight and you think to yourself, my God, how do these real fighters go 12 rounds? Then you're looking at Mayweather and you're thinking, my goodness, this guy has been retired. <laughs> this guy's been retired for years, right? Wasn't that McGregor fight something like four years ago? This guy's been retired for years. And today he has more stamina than Logan Paul in his mid-twenties. So let's just say the rest of the fight is Mayweather winning the fight. Right? Mayweather's sharper. Mayweather's the guy who knows how to counter. Mayweather's defense is better. Mayweather is the professional. Right? He's the guy who actually has wins on his record. But you left the fight thinking, you know what? Logan Paul went for it, right? That first round is a rocky moment. Also, Logan Paul, after he gets tired, is still trying to go for it, right? This wasn't a case you never get the feeling. Logan Paul's corner is going to throw in the towel. Let me also say, too, Logan Paul is so tired that between rounds, he leans on the ropes at times and he just bends over. The guy can barely breathe. The guy can barely breathe. That's not going to stop him. He has a dream. We have a dream of being able to compete against the best. He's in the ring with the best. The fact that he's getting beaten, the fact that he is tired, that's not going to stop him. He's waited his whole life for a moment like this. So let me just say, I give this fight my highest rating, right? Look, I'm not saying it's the Thriller in Manila, right? I'm not saying this is Hagler Hearns, but let's just say... 
My goodness, folks, a big part of boxing is the competitive spirit. And you saw it here. Right? Floyd Mayweather is coming forward against a younger guy. He's trying to cut off distance. The younger guy is holding Floyd. Floyd at times gets hit with shots. He's not going to be deterred. Floyd wants the win. Right now it's an exhibition, so technically there are no winners. But Floyd wanted the win. Floyd clearly dominates the later part of the fight. But Logan Paul also wanted the win. Right? You also notice things you didn't notice in a typical Mayweather fight. Here's Logan Paul with a huge reach advantage. And Logan Paul couldn't reach Floyd. <laughs> there are times in the fight where Logan Paul is throwing jabs that no doubt hit sparring partners and preparing for the fight. And you notice Mayweather's just moving around the ring. You notice that Mayweather is more mobile than you think, even as a middle-aged fighter. And then you have to think to yourself, well, how come I didn't see Mayweather move this easily against professional fighters? And it's because they're professional fighters. This match reminded all of us how hard it is to be a real professional prize fighter. I applaud it. I applaud Logan Paul. Logan, you proved me wrong. I thought a guy with no wins against Floyd Mayweather. This fight's not going the distance. Sure enough, Floyd threw that left hook. Floyd landed that left hook. Logan Paul had a dream. He took that left hook. Lost the fight, in my opinion, on my scorecard. His best moments were in the first round. But he went for it. In my opinion, boxing has nothing to be embarrassed about in a fight where both fighters tried to give their best performances. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. I look forward to more of these fights, right? I'm hoping we see more fighters like Floyd Mayweather in the ring showing us why they were great fighters against guys who take the whole thing seriously. Logan Paul showed up in shape. Logan Paul tried his best to impose himself on Floyd Mayweather. And for that, I applaud him. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.